Speaker. Honourable Liam Delsey. Mr Speaker, I would like to acknowledge uh, the Minister, the Minister for Regulatory Reform, New Zealand's first Minister for Regulatory Reform, and to thank him for thank him for you yeah, definitely the best one so far and I know I can say that without anyone able to challenge it at all um, but I want to thank him for the uh, generosity of his comments uh, with respect to the work that I did in this area uh, he will find out I'm sure what a thankless task it is sometimes with one's colleagues uh, to be pushing the the mantra on regulatory reform and regulatory improvement and I'm going to come to the language of his new bill in a minute uh, but first of all, I thought I'd acknowledge uh, what happened in the committee stages because uh, I felt that there was uh, good humour, uh, particularly in the competition uh, for references to my name. And I actually thought that the, well, the overall winner was absolutely uh, David Parker. He, he bolted in with over 20 references to my name in a, uh, in a five-minute speech, uh, whereas uh, Ms Claire Curran only got to 13 references in a 10-minute speech. So uh, definitely David Parker was the overall winner of the competition. Uh, but what I particularly liked about David Parker's contribution was that he deliberately mispronounced my name, Del Zeal, in order to emphasise the zeal to which I had brought to the uh, role of uh, Minister of Commerce with responsibility for regulatory issues. Um, but what I, what I wanted to say about it was that the good humour actually reflected the response of the House of the Whole, and I thought that, was, uh, that boded very well for business, because on both sides of the House we are prepared to talk about quality regulation and what that might mean uh, for uh, business and for sustainable business practices and also for uh, productivity, as others have mentioned. And although um, I respect the, the Greens' uh, position on the issue that they raised, it actually wasn't the principle of the bill that the Greens were raising. It was the issue of whether one of the aspects of the bill should have been included in a bill of this nature. A and I respect that. We have a different view on the, on the actual facts of the matter, but uh, with respect to the reason for raising it, it wasn't the overall principle of a regulatory improvement bill. Um, and, but the other thing is, is that, and there was again, because of the, the sort of good humour around it, I actually don't want anyone to think for a minute that this bill was the outcome of the quality regulation review. It was only one tiny little outcome of the quality regulation review, which had a lot of other outcomes, which um, I won't go into because that might be considered to be um, out of scope of this particular debate. But it, it was an important part of the quality regulation review. That review was a multifaceted review uh, that asked officials and business to engage with each other in a very direct way. And I was part of that as well. As I've said to the House, I travelled uh, around the country and engaged with business in a wide range of areas. And I want to put on record my, my thanks to the, um, to the Chambers of Commerce and to the EDAs around the country that actually facilitated those meetings. Because what they did was that they, they brought business people in to meet with me with specific issues on their mind. And so it wasn't just a complaint fest about, you know, what's wrong with regulation and how much red tape am I, am I um, exposed to. It was really a, a problem-solving exercise on, I think, one of the greatest scales that we've actually done on this country. But it was a small thing. It was actually the small businesses telling us how these small things irritated the hell out of them and how just with a little bit of effort around these small things, then that would be a big relief to business and they could get on with the job. Uh, Mr Speaker, I don't, I don't want to repeat all of the things I said in the committee, and, and, sorry, in the um, second reading speech, but this, um, this bill really doesn't realise my wildest dreams. I don't want anyone to think for a minute that I think that this bill is good enough. It's the first um, bill, but it should have been a blockbuster. It shouldn't have been um, only nine pieces of legislation being amended. There should have been 29 pieces of legislation being amended, or 39, or 69, or 89, or 99, or whatever. I, I actually think that what this really hammered home to me was how hard it is for any government, any government, to change things that are relatively small when you look at the big picture 
when you're trying to deal with the parliamentary processes that we have in place that are there for good reason, but actually act as a barrier to progress when there are small technical amendments that can be made. Now, this parliament's been uh, good enough over the years to develop the concept of the statutes amendment bill, but as everyone knows, if one party disagrees with any one of those, then that one has to go. So it's a very good way of getting um, rid of the, the technical changes that need, need to be made, but anyone can disagree. Nothing can be anywhere controversial. There can be really no debate about it. It's just a straightforward um, change to a whole lot of different um, statutes. And that's good. That's a great process. So that's one process. The Business Law Reform Bill is, is a, a approved by the Business Committee on an annual basis or, or when it's required to be introduced. But as people will have seen through this debate, not all of these elements could be um, identified as business law reform. But I still would like this bill to be written in as one of the types of bills that are accepted by this House as an omnibus bill. And departments should be not just invited, but they should be required to send through these small items through to another department to take over the work and fix the problem. I'll tell you, I, I became the Associate Minister of Justice so I could get a change made for the wine industry with respect to the sale of Liquor Act because I could not get, as Minister of Commerce, running the Quality Regulation Review to make the tiny change that needed to be made to fix a mistake that had been made when the Winemakers Act was repealed in the 1989 changes to the sale of Liquor Act. I think, as, as um, Rodney Hyde will find out as he delves into regulation. This is the biggest barrier to getting this kind of change through this business, uh, through Parliament, and that is the, um, the, the reaction of the departments. Second, it's the, it's the time that the Minister has to put to it, and, and actually giving it up to another department who has responsibility for tidying up some of these smaller regulatory matters, I think would be a good thing. I just make for the record, and I want to put on, on, on the record the thanks to all of the departmental officials who came to the select committee, but when we had a cast of thousands, I just about felt like banging my head against a brick wall because this was the whole reason that the, these sorts of changes get held up. And we had literally, I mean, I don't know how many we had in the room at one time, but at some point, I mean, they, they certainly outnumbered the members of the committee and all of our officials. So it was just, um, it, it really emphasised for me the problem. And that is, is that we've got to get into a position where we can trust our own departments to work a lot more collaboratively and take up some of the responsibility for these things. The final point that I will make is, that, is the question of regulatory improvement versus regulatory reform. I have to say that the health reforms of the 1990s ruined that word reform for me because I thought that the word reform meant to make it better or you know, to sort of really look at something in a, in, a, in a new way that would lead to an advancement of the situation. The health reforms of 1990s just absolutely ruined that word for me and that's why I don't use the word reform. I use the word improvement because You'd be surprised at the number of people who will argue reform when in fact it is not an improvement to the situation from the business perspective. Even I was surprised at the pushback on some of the very sensible suggestions that I took through on behalf of business, and I'm not going to list them here because they're going to be in Labour Party policy next time, and the pushback will not be tolerated when we are next in government. Mr Speaker, this is not always about the regulation as it appears in the legislation. It is often about how it's implemented on the ground by the regulators, which is actually another story. And I think that this is an ongoing one, and I'll be happy to support uh, future regulatory improvement bills, even if they're called regulatory reform bills, because this process is good for our parliament and it's good for business. Speaker. Thank you, Mr Speaker.